Hello, welcome to my frequently asked questions. Today, I'm answering a commonly asked question about blepharoplasty. How do I avoid terrible scars? How do I get the best results from my eyelid surgery with virtually invisible scars? So first of all, when we consider this question, there are a few important things we need to look at. Firstly, what's our objective? Well, our objective with eyelid surgery is to open up the eyes, refresh your appearance, reduce puffiness, bags, but really we want those scars to be virtually invisible. And unlike many areas of the face and body, that is really possible with eyelid surgery because the skin is unique. It's very, very thin, which means that if the scars are well done, they can be virtually invisible. What are the different options to close the skin and why is that important? And this includes different types of stitches, different types of glue, and so I'll talk to you about those. The design of the scar is very important, common aspects of healing of the scars, revision of the scars, and then I'll show you some of my, my personal case studies, case, cases where we can look at the scars, and then my personal tips. My name is Dr. Julian De Silva. I'm an oculofacial plastic surgeon based in London, and I specialize in eyelid surgery and blepharoplasty, and I do this surgery every day for my patients. This does not constitute a medical consultation. It really is for education and entertainment. And, and so if you need personal opinion on your scars, well, you really need to see a doctor and have a consultation. So blepharoplasty scars, well, what is our goal? Our goal is really a virtually invisible scar. So this patient of mine had a lot of loose skin in the upper eyelid and puffiness and her eyelids look tired. And this is about six to eight weeks after surgery and we could see that the eyelid is more open, it looks refreshed. And although she's had upper and lower eyelid surgery, the scars are virtually invisible. The scar is hidden in her natural crease. And although there was loose skin outside the eyelid, it's quite difficult to see the scar because it's placed in a discrete area. And similarly, where she had a lot of loose skin in the lower eyelid, that scar, well, it looks just like that natural line which she had before the surgery. So our goal is virtually, virtually invisible scars. Now, what are the different type of ways we can close the skin? So non-dissolvable stitches, but well, what that means is stitches that are removed after one week. And often these are black or blue in color, and these stitches are very fine. And because they're non-dissolvable, they don't irritate the skin, and they can be removed relatively easily, and they don't tend to cause scarring in the eyelid. They tend to give very fine, natural scars. And the downside, well, they do need to be removed, but in expert hands, that tends to be relatively comfortable. And although some patients are worried by this, generally, it's pretty straightforward taking out the little fine stitches. Dissolvable stitches, well, dissolvable stitches are stitches that are put in at the time of the surgery but are not removed. So they gradually break down and dissolve without having to take them out. Now, in my opinion, this is a bit of a shortcut because it's easy to put these stitches in, but that means you don't have to take them out. And although they can result in fine scars, in some people, when those stitches dissolve, they can irritate the skin and that can lead to an increased scarring, and even track marks. So in my opinion, I would not use these in not just eyelid surgery or blepharoplasty, I would not use these in facial surgery because we really want the very finest scars, which will not necessarily come from dissolvable stitches. Stitches that are removed at one week are less likely to cause visible scars. And what about glues? Well, there are different types of glue. Like if you go to casualty and you had a minor trauma, a type of glue which is similar to super glue, sironoacrylate is used. That glue highly irritates the skin and only lies on the surface of the skin. So it's okay for very, very superficial like injuries, but for anything more pronounced, and certainly with surgery, it would not give a good result. The other type of t glue is called tissue glue. And I previously did a randomized control study looking at this and have spent a great deal of time on this in terms of research. And this can give some nice results in some people. However, I feel because it's based on a human product, it's probably not the best way to close the skin in our current world. And 
I did used to use this technique. However, because it uses um, a blood-based product, it's a bit like having a transfusion. Would you really want to have a transfusion unless you really needed it? Although all the donor material is refined and looked and assessed and treated, well, you really don't want to have like any potential issues with infection unless you absolutely need it. So I think tissue glue at the moment, because it's based on a human product, is best avoided for these reasons alone. And there are a few other reasons why I feel like non-dissolvable stitches also give finer scars. So in terms of scar design, well, I would say this is extremely important because scar design the crease in your upper eyelid, for instance, can vary anywhere from six millimeters to 12 millimeters above your eyelashes. And so there are often differences between the right and left side. And key, particularly with upper eyelid surgery, is hiding that scar in the natural crease. And doing that can make it virtually invisible. But it does m require meticulous attention to detail, measuring the two sides, the right and left side, making sure they're even and symmetrical. And this can be quite challenging because a lot of people do have asymmetries in this area. But taking these precautions, it can take 10 or even 15 minutes to mark the eyelid area before surgery, but this ultimately can give really fine and hidden scars. Now, high scars, well, if the scar is not put in the crease, well, when the eyelid opens, the scar can create a second crease, which can be more visible. That can be frustrating, and it can require other treatments, including surgery, to correct. This is an example of exactly that. The green line shows the patient's natural crease, and the red arrow shows where the scar was placed, and it was put above the person's natural skin crease. So it doesn't look quite right, it doesn't look quite natural, However, with revision blepharoplasty, I was able to correct this and make the scar lower in her natural skin crease to hide the scar. This is another patient, and this patient had a lot of puffiness in the lower eyelid area, and you can see there's loose skin in this area. So this patient needed like a pinch of loose skin removing, and at six weeks, we can see there's a very fine pink line very close to the eyelashes. And with time, this will fade more and more, and it will be virtually invisible. And this, in the lower eyelid, well, many of my patients don't need surgery in terms of a, um, a scar in the skin because it can tighten the skin just with a laser. However, patients who have a lot of loose skin, meticulous attention to detail, putting the scar very close to the eyelashes, and about a third of people have a natural crease in the area, well, that can make the scar very discreet, but care is required to avoid extending the scar outside the, the, the eyelid area on either side to keep it delicate and discreet. Now, what about healing? Well, healing across the scar, well, sometimes you can get like a tiny little cyst in the eyelid, and these are uncommon. They happen less than 5% of the time. And 50% of these tiny little cysts, they just dissolve, they just resolve without treatment. But occasionally, if they don't resolve, it means putting a tiny amount of local anesthetic in that area and just removing the cyst. And that's a small procedure that can be done in just five minutes. Sometimes in some individuals, the scars can be a little bit pink after surgery. And that is really more genetics than anything related to the surgery. And the often pinkness resolves in like two weeks, but sometimes it can be as long as six weeks. I found in some of my patients that using bio oil and massaging that into the skin that's a little pink. Well, the pink color is your body trying to heal the area and attracting oxygen and nutrients to that area. Bio oil tends to help healing of the skin. Rarely, the skin can be pink even many, many months after surgery, and that's just partly natural genetics, and that can be treated sometimes with cream, sometimes using a different type of laser on the skin, um, but that isn't, that isn't necessary in the great majority of people. What about the final result? Well, the final result 
often scars can look good even at six weeks after surgery. And the reason is the scars are hidden in the crease of the eyelid and that hiding in the crease makes it very difficult to see because when you look straight ahead, the crease is hidden. When you blink, it's too quick. So the crease can only be seen if you close your eyes or you look down where initially it might be a little bit pink or lumpy bumpy, but then with time, that pinkness and the lumpy bumpiness fades. In some people, it can be useful to use a silicon gel and then massaging that into the crease twice a day for a period of weeks. That can help with remodeling of the scar. So what initially in a scar can be like a, a ball of wool, all the fibers in every direction. And then with remodeling of the scar, which happens naturally over months, but can be enhanced with silicon gel, the remodeling results in reorganization of the scar, flattening of the collagen fibers, and so the scar becomes smoother, flatter, and less tight. And what can give the best scars? Meticulous technique. Genetics are always important. Sometimes regenerative medicine, the use of platelet-rich plasma, can be helpful in reducing scars. And Sometimes lasers, CO2 lasers, can be used to refine scars further. So scar revision, it isn't necessary in the majority of patients. Most scars, if they're done meticulously with, the de with, with detail, put in the right places using non-dissolvable stitches, they heal well. The final result can be as long as 18 months after surgery. Most patients don't need revision of scars, but if they do, lasers and regenerative medicine can be helpful in remodeling of those scars and making them better. So now we're going to look at a few of my cases. So this patient, well, as we talked about earlier, a lot of loose skin, the upper eyelid, and that upper eyelid is rolling onto her lower eyelid, but the scar is hidden in her natural crease, which makes it very difficult to see. And although there's loose skin that extends all the way out here, outside the eyelid, by using her natural crease, using fine stitches and delicate techniques, the scar is really virtually invisible and very difficult to see. Now this is another patient with relatively mild changes in the upper eyelid, but we can see that there's just this roll of lower eyelid skin folding over the upper eyelid. And afterwards, well, the scar is hidden in the crease, and in this area, the, crease needs, the scar needs to be virtually perfect in order for it to be hidden. And here it just looks like a natural crease in the eyelid and very difficult to see. Another patient, well, this patient had a low brow and so the brows were lifted up in order to open up the space in the eyelids and improve symmetry. In a man it's important not to overdo this kind of surgery because it can feminize or change your appearance but with good and natural techniques it can look very natural and afterwards while well, the scars are really hidden in the crease and are difficult to see in most patients with brow lift surgery, I would hide the scars within the hair. But in some people, if the hair has been lost with alopecia, receding hair, it may be necessary to put the scar lower down, closer to the eye eyebrow. Now, this scar can be hidden just at the upper border of the brow. But this is about six weeks after surgery, so we can just see it's very slightly pink. But with further healing, this scar can be very difficult to see. Ethnic scars, well, ethnic skin tends to be more troublesome with healing. It can be, result in pigmentation in the skin. It can take longer to heal. And so meticulous attention to detail is required to conceal the scar in a natural crease and make sure those creases are even on the right and left sides. Ptosis surgery. Well, ptosis means that the eyelid is slightly lower in position to the, the opposite eye. And in terms of ptosis surgery, well, often this surgery can be done in a modern way where the scar is hidden on the inside of the eyelid, which avoids a visible scar completely. And this surgery is quite delicate in that lifting the eyelid by a millimeter, millimeter and a half, well, it requires a great deal of refinement and it can be very difficult to match the eyelid height perfectly because of that. But certainly this, these scars can be hidden for ptosis surgery. 
Now, in young patients with fullness in the eyelid, often more is required in order to open up the eyes, but the same principles apply. We do need to take some of the loose skin, but we also need to take a little bit of fat in the cushion around the eyelid in order to open up the eyes further to see more of the eyelid. And really, this is 100% genetics. It's not aging, but meticulous attention detail is required to make sure that scar is hidden and un in invisible because there's no loose skin here in this patient. And so the crease has to be used to hide the scar. The lower eyelid area, well, patients with loose skin in the lower eyelid most patients can be treated without having a scar, and I often use a, a, a sophisticated CO2 laser that tightens the superficial skin, tightens the deeper skin, and stimulates collagen. However, in some patients with marked amounts of loose skin, what can really benefit is taking a few millimeters of the loose skin away, because often these patients who've got really fine skin, when you smile, the cheeks lift up, you get bunching of loose skin, and removing that skin just takes away some of those wrinkles. It does require hiding the scar right underneath the eyelashes, and about a third of people have a natural crease in that area that can be used, but the scar must be done in a way that it doesn't extend outside the eyelid, and care is required in terms of closing the scar to make sure it's meticulous, and it must never be overdone, because too much skin removed from the lower eyelid can pull the lower eyelid down, and pulling the lower eyelid down is something we very much want to avoid with lower eyelid surgery or lower blepharoplasty. So my tips in terms of avoiding issues with scars and getting the best results from blepharoplasty with virtually invisible scars, I think meticulous technique is very important, and measuring and looking at the natural creases being diligent with this is very important, and this is probably the most important factor. Using non dissolvable stitches, well, that will give the finest scars because these do not irritate the skin. Genetics is definitely important, and in some patients, well, keloid scar, although extremely rare around the eyelid area, care must be taken if patients are known to have keloid scarring, and you should note, let your um, surgeon know if you've got visible scars elsewhere in the body. Other techniques, including regenerative medicine, platelet plasma, these can be really helpful for some patients to heal scars first to ensure that they um, they're, they're heal as quickly as possible and, 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 and reduce pinkness. Lasers, particularly SU2 laser, can be particularly helpful in refining scars. And I've also shown you some before and after photos to give you some ideas of how healing and scars can be. So, how to get the best scars? Well, these are the things we've covered. You know, what is our goal? Well, really a virtually invisible scar. What are the different options with different types of stitches, different types of glues? How to design the scar? What is scar healing? What does revision of scar mean? And I've showed you a number of my own personal cases to give you an idea of things and my own personal tips. I do hope this information has been helpful for you. If you have any questions or thoughts or anything you'd like to ask me, please do not hesitate to contact me either through my website or through social media. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.